All right. I remember the first time uh, I went through a code red drill in high school. It was the year after Columbine happened. I graduated in 2001. Columbine happened, what, 99? So it was, uh, you know, that that school year uh, immediately after that uh, the high school I went to uh, started, uh, you know, putting the word out to students. Uh, this is what it means when you hear code red over the intercom. You've got to you know, run to the nearest classroom, get inside, close the door, lock it, and don't let anybody in. Even if they're pounding on the door, screaming for help. Uh, and that was something that was uh, a little different than the tornado drills we would have or, you know, the fire drills we would have where everybody would just kind of lackadaisical, get in line and walk out. Uh, this was uh, this was a totally different type of drill. And, of course, it was spurred on because of the, the horrible incident uh, and the brutal murder of young people at uh, Columbine High School uh, back in 1999. What's happened since? We've seen continued violence in schools. Uh, some have uh, just been inc- mind-blowing to think about how many kids have been killed. Uh, others, you know, two or three kids may be uh, injured uh, but not killed. Regardless, uh, you got to imagine the scarring that does uh, to a, a kid who's in school, which is supposed to be a safe place to learn. Uh, but uh, since 1999, uh, we've seen this this ongoing. One thing that's changed since then is the the use of social media by children. Now, I also remember back in high school, uh, we were we were learning about the internet. All right, I, I joke with Megan all the time. You know, we're we're of the generation where you listen. Know, I'm I'm 38. So we're of the generation where uh, I remember a time where we didn't have the internet. And then we got the internet, but it took up the phone line and was super slow. And if you wanted to call somebody, you had to hang up the internet and you had to call somebody. I used to get into fist fights with my brother trying to talk to Megan on the phone late at night. And he wanted to get online to download music. So we would literally <laughs> he would kick, he'd kick the door and be like, get off the phone, dude, I'm downloading. And uh, we would we would uh, we would tussle. <laughs> I don't think that happens anymore. Now everybody's got the internet literally in their pocket, uh, where they could just whip out their phone and get online and check out the latest anything, weather, news, whatever, streaming WMAY, uh, watching YouTube videos, Bishop on Air. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Bishop on Air. Uh, but no, so we're we're of a generation where we we had the internet. But it was very limited in its capacity. And I even remember back then in high school, we were learning how to kind of build websites with, um, what was that website? Oh, gosh. Um, GeoCities. We would create our own GeoCities websites, right? And it was so cool. But even back then, I remember one student created something called the Slam Book. And it was, in a way kind of uh, a thread of different ridiculous stories and gossip about people and whatnot. Uh, And that was, that was, you know, a mild problem back then, but now we have social media uh, to the degree where it's now so pervasive with the recent stories of uh, threats of violence against schools. How do you deal with this in your kids? 217-629-7970. I'd love to hear from you. Again, 217-629-7970. That's the phone number, live and local. You can also email bishoponair at gmail.com. So uh, we've got the reporting that here in Sangamon County, at least, there were several schools that uh, – had students making some threats using social media. And this one app in particular, I've never even heard of it. It's called Yik Yak. Uh, apparently it's uh, sold as some kind of anonymous messaging platform, but really it's not. Uh, so these types of things are in your kids' hands, uh, especially if they have their own smartphone. I always joke um, when we have kids, uh, I'm going to give my kid a, a jitterbug. It's going to have three buttons on it. No screen. It's just going to be the most stripped down phone that you could possibly have. No access to the internet. Uh, Just, you know, a button to call mom, to call dad, or to call the police. That's it. Um, Because the, the, the social media landscape is so 
so pervasive and way too easily accessible. It's not just people making videos on TikTok. And apparently, it's people making threats on Yik Yak. And uh, it's something that I think uh, parents need to really sit down and have a conversation with their kids about because it's not a joke, especially after all we've seen uh, in national headlines. So how do you address this with your kids? 217-629-7970 is the phone number. Uh, do you have these conversations? Uh, do you do you hear your kids talk about uh, the, the, the bullying that goes on on social media? Because it's not just the threats. It's also the bullying that happens on social media. Listen, adults bully other adults using social media, for crying out loud. I mean, if you look at some of the comment threads on uh, some Facebook posts, it's just, it's abysmal. It's, I stopped even having such conversations on social media with people uh, years ago. I I just, I knew back then that it was a waste of my time. I wasn't going to change anybody's mind. I was spinning my wheels and it would feed into my uh, overall, um, uh, poor attitude throughout the day because I would go back and I think about oh gosh that person said that to me I'm really gonna get them um, I just stopped I stopped and now I comment on things about you know <laughs> silliness uh, but uh, do kids have that kind of governor do they have that ability to regulate uh, their own use of social media and how it impacts them uh, I think it's an ongoing problem an ongoing conversation that uh, needs to be had uh, and I'd love to hear how you're having that conversation with your kids. 217-629-7970 is the phone number. You can also email bishoponair at gmail.com. But you have the police and law enforcement in our community uh, who have, have had to deal with several instances of threats on social media uh, towards schools. I mean, you had uh, Ball Chatham School District dealing with it. You had uh, uh, Glenwood High School dealing with it. You had... Uh, um, uh, the the uh, Sacred Heart Griffin dealing with it, uh, and even um, uh, some threats made against Grant Middle School uh, and a variety of other schools dealing with the Springfield High School Tuesday afternoon. There was an investigation after somebody made uh, threats on a social media app. So do you tell your kids to avoid these things or that if they see something, they need to say something? But even then, We've seen in other instances red flags raised. For instance, uh, you had the, the, the horrible shooting down in Florida uh, where there were, there were plenty of red flags in that case. Uh, you had the shooting in Michigan last week uh, where, again, red flags were raised. But local authorities didn't do anything. School officials didn't do anything. Uh, so now we have in our community similar types of threats being made on social media and uh, it's uh, it's pretty incredible to see how it's uh, how it's impacting operations and the law enforcement stepping up, uh, not taking this as jokes, not taking it lightly, and uh, actually looking to hold some children accountable for their actions. Two one seven six two nine seven nine seventy. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Hi. Um, I have um, eleven year old twins, a boy and a girl, and. Uh, they do not have cell phones, and they're not allowed on social media at all. So that's how I solve the problem. Just you completely not even allow them to have access to it? No. We have a desktop computer at home. They get a certain amount of time each day they can play on the computer, but there's no Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, anything like that. Do you plan on giving them free access to it when they get to a certain age? Possibly. I don't know. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But they're only 11 now. There's no, there's no reason for them to, to be on social media. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, I agree 100% with that. Uh, but sadly, there's a lot of kids who are using uh, these types of apps to bully others, to make various types of threats, thinking they can get away with it. Uh, and yeah. it's uh, it's problematic. Hey, I appreciate the call. 217-629-7970. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Good morning, Mayor uh, Bishop. This is a uh... Minister Pierce, how are you doing today? Fantastic, Gary. Good for you calling in. Yes, I'm, I'm listening to what you're talking about. Uh, uh, I don't have any uh, young children, but I have raised four young adults. It's going on to life to be productive. Uh, I've talked to you before about some of my ideas when it comes to our youth. Um, I also, when I ran for the school board, I thought there was a lot of things that were missing 
that we had when I was growing up as youth, as a youth. And so uh, we talk about all the things that's going on with the social media. Uh, there's really no reverse. I know that they're talking about it. Uh, I saw on the news this morning where they were talking about uh, these uh, new apps that these children are getting on and making threats. I think one of them was the name Yik Yak. Yep. And uh, and if we don't control, if we don't gain some kind of control over the social media, then we're going to have this. But it really starts. It really do starts. And you know, a lot of people don't like to hear it, but it does start with the parents. And then it also, what's missing is uh, morals and values. And, uh, there, There's a lot to say about that. Um, because if a parent is not involved in their child's life, that child's likelihood of uh, not having the right kinds of guidance will lead them down a path that is very hard to hit the reverse button on, right? Yes. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, you can become, you can grow up in a single parent home like myself, and there may be some things, but at the same time, if you don't, you could have a strong mother or father that's going to make sure to keep an eye out on you and, and, and take you and make sure you make the, the choice of going to straight and narrow road. And uh, that, my, you know, again, some families, some, some, some people have come from those strong single parent homes, but nowadays there's so much going on, not only with the youth, but with the adults. There's so much different. Media. Well, the adults are mired in social media. You know, there's uh, they're yeah. online debating with each other, calling each other, you know, duty heads and right. COVID idiots, <laughs> or you know, they're bullying each other. Uh, you've got you know, media talking heads bullying people all across the spectrum. I mean, it's just you, you have to be the change that you want to see in others, right? Yes, and I mean, you know, with this with the social media, and I I have to say, I have to admit, I am on Facebook. You know, but I, I'm streaming I live post. on Facebook right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I saw you at. That's why. That's why I called in because I, I was saying I wonder if he's still live. I called in, but yeah, I you know I use Facebook, but I try to do positive things with it. But you know, I can say that sometimes you know there's there's been debates I've gotten into, and most of those debates are you know political debates. You know, and some been some hard words. But uh, man, for kids, yeah. it's not you know it's not po- politics. It's uh, right. You know, juvenile things about, uh, you know, uh, first time relationships or, you know, somebody wore something they didn't like or somebody made right. a statement they didn't like at lunch. And then it just elevates. And uh, we know how uh, empowered people, uh, adults can be, uh, keyboard commandos behind the keyboard. We know how empowered they can be being behind a keyboard in debates. You got to think about the same types of things that kids who get on social media uh, to interact in these ways, uh, they may feel empowered, a false sense of empowerment if they're going to start making threats, uh, and it's going to catch up to them. It's going to lead to some bad situations. Gary, I appreciate the call. Got to take another okay. one, 217-629-7970. Good morning. Hey, some of the things that would help in that as a custodial as a primary custody parent is if Facebook would, if a parent reports a profile as not being the appropriate age, if they'd actually shut it down. If it, right. Well, that's <laughs> also got to be important for the parent to realize uh, that they've got that situation uh, playing out with their kids. Well, in addition to which, I think um, what they did with the one uh, tutor where the parents are held responsible. Mm. I think in some cases they need to start holding the parents a little bit more responsible. And I mean, in addition to all this stuff, I mean, I, well, I don't know. I it, It's worthy of a much longer conversation. That's for sure. Got more phone calls coming in at 217-629-7970. Good morning. Hello. You're on the air. Hello. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, I was calling in to say that about the social media thing. I think that uh, kids shouldn't be on social media at all. It should be uh, uh, made that you have to be 18, just like cigarettes. You have to be 18 to be on social media. Well, I think, I think now it's cigarettes, it's 21. Uh, and uh, I think the age for, like, Twitter is 13 or Instagram's like, 13 or something like that. But, yeah, uh, that's too young in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, it should be mandated. They should have to upload a copy of their photo ID mm. and verify their account to show uh, proof of age because kids are just too immature to have that type of a platform, yeah. right? And yeah. kids should be shielded from 
uh, topics like sex. You know, kids shouldn't be having sex before their mind has developed. You know, kids shouldn't be uh, thinking about violence. Period. You know what I mean? They should be sticking to math, arithmetic, English, uh, exercise, uh, community service. Uh, and, you know, sometimes social media may help with some of that, but a lot of times it's not. Uh, we'll take a few more calls here. Good morning. You're on WMAY talking social media, kids, threats of violence here locally that we've seen play out. What's up? Good morning, Greg. Hey, now, I don't know if many people know this or not, but whenever Facebook started, you at back in you know 2008 2009, you actually had to have a college right. email address. Yeah, it had to in be order like a dot get, edu email address. It did. Right. It had to be a dot edu, and I think that might be something that people mm. might want to look back at. And actually, hey, if you don't have a college email address or have proof that you know you've been a member since forever ago, <laughs> that guess what, you don't get it. And account and so therefore all of the you know young young people uh won't be able to get on and that's an interesting proposal uh it'll be it'll be fascinating to see if something like that comes up and i don't know how you uh enforce that type of thing good morning you're on wmay yeah hey good morning i just kind of wanted to put it out there for any of the parents that might be listening so i've got an 11 year old son um you know share custody with his mom uh he's back and forth it's kind of nice for him to have a cell phone uh, but, you know, with cell phones, you can download any app you want and pretty much do whatever you want. But there's an app that you as a parent can download called MM, that's Mike Mike Guardian. And it basically just mirrors the phone mm -hmm. onto your phone. So you can see literally anything and everything that they're doing. You can go in and you can shut off certain apps that they've downloaded, um, you know, TikTok, whatever. You can make it so that it will not even open on their phone. Um you know, you can ban them from having Snapchat. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. It's nice to kind yeah. Of the play. technology out there to police some of this use uh, is is pretty incredible. I appreciate the call. Uh, good morning. You're on WMAY. Hi, hi, Greg. I'm not going to get into the social media thing. It's just it's like uh, if you want to censor that. I mean, how it's like trying to censor anything uh, that, what people are talking about on our cell phones. What I find interesting though about this is that I read a Reader's Digest article not too long ago. And said a local people still uh, read district. Reader's Digest. Yeah, a, a school that no, well, this a school district actually did a survey of, and they decided uh, they called at nine o'clock at night to ask parents if they knew where their kids were. Okay, of the first twelve they called, the kids answered, and eight of the twelve kids said they did not know where their parents were. Yeah, that in a nutshell, That's pretty wild. much. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's wild. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, 9 o'clock TV news would come on, and the first thing would be was just the 9 o'clock TV news. Do you know where your kids are? Uh, one last one. I, I, guys, I'm late for a break. Uh, all the phone calls and all the thoughts I appreciate. We'll get one last one in. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to say, as a parent, you know, you, I have had to do my due diligence on educating myself on putting regulations on my child's phone. So, we have different app, apps that are on her phone that she can't download things without, you know, her dad or I putting in a, you know, passcode. So we see everything that she does. Her phone's on GPS. Um, and then I just want to say, you know, I'm 38 too, so I can relate to back in the day, you know, we didn't even touch a cell phone. Our, our parents back more phone in the car unless it was a, an absolute emergency. Mm -hmm. And we had pagers, so we were like begging our our parents to <laughs> stop right, the yeah. phone. I remember a kid yeah. getting uh, kicked out of school because uh, he had a pager on him. That was uh, that's a trip. Yeah, so the times have certainly changed. I think uh, though, what the pastor had just referred to in a previous call with you is absolutely correct. It starts at home. It yeah. starts with the parent. It starts with the parent doing their due diligence, educating themselves, finding out what apps are available to them out there to put restrictions on their kids' phones. Um, if you're going to allow your kids to do that, we're in a, an age in society where you have to be in the know on what's going on yeah. um, to educate yourself, to educate your children. It's really that simple. Thank you mind. so much for calling and absolutely appreciate that. All right. Got to take a break. Thank you so much. We'll, of course, have to carry this conversation to another time. Now, 831, woefully late for a break. It's from Culver's West on Wabash. What makes the holidays so magical?